Nigeria to be specific, where a court has seized $21 million from bank accounts linked to the former oil minister. Dizani Alison Madweke was once one of Africa's most prominent female politicians. Now, though, she's accused of corruption as investigators continue to claw back her fortune. Nigeria's Anti-Graft Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has argued that she effectively laundered the funds with the help of top oil officials. Now, since leaving office in 2015, Alison Madweke has been implicated in bribery, fraud and the misuse of public funds, as well as money laundering cases in multiple countries, Nigeria, the UK, Italy and the United States. The former president of the global oil cartel, OPEC, and the first woman to hold that post, has always, however, denied these allegations. Right then, so what exactly is happening over in Nigeria? Let's get some answers from Deji Banwos, who joins us now live on the line from Lagos. Um, Deji, let's start with Diazani's um, location at the moment. Where exactly is she? Is she still in London? Well, that's the last known address we were told. Uh, she should still be in London. Um, we, 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 we've not been told that she has moved, so uh, obviously... Uh, she would still be in London. She's still there, I think. Right. So on what basis was this, this forfeiture, at least in this case of the $21 million on in local bank accounts, on what basis was that forfeiture ordered? What evidence did the AFCC present in court to prove that these assets, including the 51 houses, uh, sorry, 56 houses, were linked directly to the former oil minister? Well, very hard evidence, Rama, very hard evidence. As a matter of fact, documentary evidence. The EFCC approached the court with quite a lot of evidence, wired um, uh, transfer, uh, cash payment, cash lodgements in, in various bank accounts. And, of course, um, the EFCC actually interviewed or, if you like, interrogated quite a number of people involved, some of those who allegedly um, worked as fronts now for the minister and uh, they actually made useful statements of the fact that um, they, were, they were basically running errands for the minister. So uh, the ESCC tendered quite a lot of documents at, as affidavit in court and uh, it was on the basis of those documents now tendered by the EFCC that um, the judge uh, hearing this case decided to uh, forfeit uh, those uh, assets temporarily. I, I mean, before this forfeiture, uh, there, had, there, there had been a, a permanent for future of another asset now, in this time cash, as, as a matter of fact, about six, uh, seven point something billion naira now belonging uh, to the minister. So this is the second round of for future we'll be seeing. So we just have to wait until September the 8th when uh, the, the judge will make a final pronouncement now on the permanent for future of these uh, assets, Rama. Indeed. One last question for you, Deji. When Mr. Buhari took office, he said the public purse was basically empty. He argued that graft was a key part of the problem. Now, other than the former oil minister, are there any other ministers or high-ranking officials in the former administration under the then-president, good luck, Jonathan, who've had their acid seized or who are facing graft charges both at home and abroad? Uh, quite, quite a lot of them, Rama, to be candid. Let's, let's begin from the military. For instance, the former chief of defense staff, who is like the overall head of the military, is actually standing trial in Nigeria and has had uh, some of his assets, uh, you know, uh, f frozen now by uh, the court. You also have the former chief of air staff. You have uh, the former chief of naval staff. You have former ministers, for instance, uh, a former minister of interior standing trial, a former minister of the federal capital territory, that's Abuja standing trial. There are quite a lot of them, Rama, quite a lot. And, and several high-ranking uh, officials and party officials, as a matter of fact, I'm talking about the former ruling party now, the PDP, who are standing trials. And you also have some members of uh, the current ruling party now, the All Progressives Congress. That's President Muhammadu Buhari's party now, who are standing trial. Quite a lot of them. To be candid, since uh, the president came to power, uh, I don't think um, we've had the kind of corruption cases uh, you know, we, we, we have right now. And let me just tell you something, Rama, something that um, perhaps our audience should know. As we speak today, there's information out there that around $2.5 billion is sitting quietly in various bank accounts in the country. Uh, people are refusing to come out to lay claim to this uh, money uh, for one reason. They don't want to be associated with the loot because they are scared they will be arrested. And so you have suggestions now 
that um, probably the, the, the president or the government should actually adopt the Indonesian approach by granting amnesty to looters so that they could actually come to lay claims to these funds. Because as we speak today, the government does not have access to the funds. These individual who own, the individuals now who own the funds do not have access to them. So the banks are basically playing with the funds. So people are saying, well, if you could grant amnesty to these looters, probably some of them would come out, declare ownership of these funds, and then the government could go on to uh, probably impose taxes of uh, as high as 70 percent uh, on the funds. That it just doesn't make sense that these funds are sitting idly in these bank accounts and no one is able to lay claim to them. The government do doesn't have access to them anyway. But it goes to show you how mm -hmm. effective or uh, so far uh, the, the anti-corruption stance of this uh, government is, Rama.